go here at Evergreen. It's the rookie of Boris set up front with Opsal in second, Fontaine in third, and Salter in fourth. Let's get underway. As you know, the cars are separated on these starts, so there's not so much chaos going into turn one. Here's Luis Fontaine. Coming out of turn three, trying to get clear of Salter and knock Salter out of the way to do so. He's getting very aggressive early. We saw some three wide action going on way back here. Look at this. I don't know if this is going to end well. Three wide coming into turn three. Oh, this is not going to be good. They're trying to keep it content so far. The nine, the 40, and the three. They do a very good job of not hitting the wall. Let's look at the go for the roof of Barney LeBlanc. You can see that all of those cars, three wide coming into the turn. You just get a feeling that one of those drivers is going to crash out, but who is it going to be? Do you want to stay? Do you want to risk losing positions? Or do you want to just get as much into the inside as you can with what you have? No crashes so far. And now it looks like most of the free white is done. No, we still have Rado who's way on the outside. Keep on losing positions. Rado almost into the wall. Coming out of turn two is a very common wall trap because there's just ever so slightly run up space, but then it just merges in very quickly. Rada is still losing positions. The 74 and the 99 side by side now. Rada looks like he's going to have to drop all the way back and just be content with that last spot unless he crashes. And there it is. Rada's finally able to make it too wide, but with the sacrifice of losing at least 10 positions. Up front is the 07 of Sen and the 19 of Opsal, and we got two wide here between Stockton and Salter. It looks like it is Stockton who did a good job at holding on for now. The 25 and the 16 are side by side. Actually not side by side, they're right by each other. Kiddo Sherwood makes something happen here, trying to get past the 16. It's too early to tell. But here is the 19 of Fusa Opsal, who is a very good short track racer. Is he going to make a move on Sad? It doesn't look like so. You can see here, the, o the 07 and the 19 have made themselves a pretty considerable gap between them and the rest of the pack. Surprisingly, no crashes in, and look at this. Rod is still at dead last, and LeBlanc and O'Sherwood go to the line. A lot of drivers in the back of the pack are still fighting for as many positions as they can. Here is the view from the 05 of Noonan. Let's get up here to the last car in the top 10, which is the 8 of LGD, who actually hasn't been doing so good lately. Your second place winner from Season 4 and playoff driver in Season 5. Oh, we have a, did we have a wreck here? There was some smoke that just happened, but it looks like whatever happened, they just saved it. The 54 in Mine looks to get past the 8 for that final spot of the top 10. Is he going to pull it off before lap 9 starts? It doesn't look like he will. Here at lap 13, you can see that Martin, also 3 wide, did not work out. A guy in Martin make contact, but Martin does a good job at saving his tires. Actually gets a little bump from Baker so he can get faster. And that's going to call it back. Oh, FKK has crashed out as well from the 44 past 12 spinning. Significant damage to the hood from the 96. From the view of LA and COVID, you see the 44 and the 96 get together and it does not end well for either driver, really. Yeah, Kovic has nowhere to go. Lap 18 now, and Fusa Opsal has take, unsurprisingly taken the lead from the 07. But Fontaine is there, a driver who's usually known for super speedway racing, is taking this track that is one-tenth of what he's used to, and he is doing very good. The final car in the top 10 is the 54 Mine. The fastest lap so far has been pulled off by the 70 of Martin. The 57 and 54 side-by-side -side for that ninth spot. Mine looks to go to the inside this time. We're going to see a lot of cars coming into pit now. It's going to be very diverse when these cars pit because they get so bunched up, you lose a lot of time if you pit with the others. The pace limit is only 35 miles an hour. Lap 20 now, 16 laps to go. Fusa Opsal, 
has the lead, but the 07 of said will still have the fastest lap bonus at the moment. Are right, we going to see any of these cars coming to pit? None of the cars are immediately coming into pit. The 70, the, the 70 who's very banged up, he might come into pit early to see if he can gain some, get some fresh tires and gain some positions while everybody else is off crowded. And it looks like that is what Martin is doing. He is coming into pit now. Martin is the first car to go to the pit line. Who's going to be the second one? Are any of these drivers going to come into pit? Nope, they are waiting out for now. Martin's still the only driver at the moment who is pitting. The last car in the top 10 is now the 57. Is he going to try to pull a puppy run on the 54 before pit stop starts? The 54 does a very good job of holding on and not letting the 57 get in the way. Here's Opsal now. Looks like Opsal is coming into pit. No, he is not. Looks like none of the other drivers are coming into pit yet. Martin is on his way out of the pit stall. You see right there, he is a couple of laps down. Merging in with the leaders. We'll see how much time he gains with that clear advantage. He is pretty banged up, but that doesn't matter in these short tracks. Opsal and Set still battling. Are they going to come into the pit now? No, they are not. Are there going to be any takers? Yes, there is going to be some takers. The one of Stockton, the 16 of Fontaine, and the 12 of Lamarty. This could be very good for the 16 of Lamarty, being the first car of the main pack to pit. Could gain a lot of positions on Opsal and Set because of it. The next cars that are coming in should be coming in, and yep, there is Opsal. Now the question is, we're going to look at the cam of Luis Fontaine. Can he do... Can he hold on? Oh, Sherwood comes into the pit stop. It's mainly just Fontaine and Stockton. Can they work together to gain some positions? Martin, you can see, is working his way around very quickly. Still has the fastest lap, which pulled off previously. The 16 is out of his pit stall. Now can he beat out Opsal, who just now started pitting? You can see that Opsal is on his way out, but Fontaine could work his way around him. Fontaine now coming to the inside. Opsal has left the pit stall. I think that means that Opsal is still going to hold out to the lead, but let's see. Fontaine working his way around the pack. We really can't tell who is and isn't in the lead at the moment because of how clustered these pit stalls are. And look at that. Opsal is still. Yeah, Opsal is just now leaving the pit stall. And because of that, that's going to be the 16 of Luis Fontaine who gets the lead. Could not take advantage of it. Oh, we have a crash between the 44 and the 40 or a teammate. But because the 19 could simply knock it out of the pit stall, it is the 16 who has the lead. Speaking of that, Levante Martin, who crashed earlier, had a very good strategy as well. And now he's in the top 10. Now he's at the top 5. Excellent strategy from Martin there. Five laps to go. There is your leader of Luis Fontaine, who is ahead of Frederick Stockton by two by about approximately two seconds. This would be a career high for Stockton, his first top five of his career, and it would be a second place finish. Bate here almost making it three wide. Bate does not want to screw up now. He has very comfortable, he has a lot of comfortable room here. Martin still has the fastest lap bonus, and it will be the 07 of said who gets the five points bonus for the most laps led. Opsal did not catch him up in time. The last car in the top 10 is the 7 of Edgewater. Is he being contested for his spot? There are so many cars back there, you can barely even tell. There he is. The 19 of Opsal is the last car. The first car out of the top 10, and it doesn't look like he's going to catch up to Edgewater because he still has Ross to deal with. A very good pit strategy for really both of the bid listed group teammates from Marion and Fontaine to pit early. It's going to be three laps to go for Luis Fontaine. Sandwiched in between two lap cars of Baker and Boyd. Coming into turn three for just a few more times. Looks like the 5 of Noonan's going to have a very good result as well. Kellogg for Sherwood has been in very good form lately. She is looking to be a consistent playoff driver. Two laps to go. What a run for Luis Fontaine and what an excellent pit strategy. 
the driver of Fusa Opsal that we thought was going to be the winner. Him and Seth are in 11th and 13th. That's what happens when you have a very clustered, when you go in the same spot as everybody else. But here's Luis Fontaine, just a quarter of a mile to go for the 16th team. A driver who was losing out in form, a regular playoff contender, finished second in the standings back in season two. This is the this is the start of something good that he's going to need if he wants to get into the playoffs, and it will be Luis Fontaine who wins at Evergreen. Stockton in second. Side by side to the line, a lot of cars come through. The race is finished. The lap cars don't have to go ahead. They don't have to race for another lap. And great, great strategy and performance from Luis Fontaine. 